Well, well, thanks everyone. Um, thank you, Catherine, uh, for inviting me here today, and uh, to to uh, Sophie and Shanna, who I also met in uh, Melbourne in November. Uh, so I'm the convener of the British Sociological Association's Applied Sociology Group, or ASG, and. Today I'm going to talk, as Catherine said, about the curriculum that we developed a few years back. So I'm going to start by talking a little bit about the ASG, just to put some context into this, and to, uh, so you can make the comparison between uh, how we're set up and how your thematic group and TARSA is set up in Australia. So the, AS, the ASG is known as a special interest group of the BSA. Um, and other special groups are a postgraduate student network and early career researcher group. So special interest groups are represented within the BSA in what's called the advisory forum, which meets once or twice a year. Well, the applied sociology group was established in around about 2006, and it was called sociologists outside academia in those days. And its, in, its aim was to represent and support sociologists who are fully or partly situated outside of academic institutions. And it was intended as a reminder that not all sociologists work in academic settings, in universities, and that sociologists do a multitude of jobs, or maybe self-employed or non-employed. I became one of the co-conveners almost by accident in about 2010, and since then, the focus has changed towards promoting applied sociology as a career option for the majority of sociology graduates who don't go into academia or even do a PhD. The group's free to join and is open to everyone, not just to BSA members. And we've, had, we've currently got around about 330 members, and that figure seems to be remarkably stable. People leave, people join, but it <laughs> seems to have been around about that level for about 10 years now. Well, our members are quite diverse and some work in research as researchers in independent research organizations or think tanks, for example, the NATSEN Social Research Network and Net NESTA. Others work for private companies that undertake contracts for businesses, public sector, and local government, voluntary sector. Technology companies in particular um, hire industrial ethnographers uh, who undertake ethnographic studies, create user personas, and support design, designers and engineers in developing design scenarios for product and service innovation. A few of our members work as consulting sociologists, a bit like Sherlock Holmes, the consulting detective, um, undertaking one-off contracts for clients. But this work is very precarious and poses huge challenges for developing and sustaining a career as an independent consulting sociologist, as any of you know, if you are in that role. It's also difficult for consulting sociologists to publish from commercial research work as much of the research is protected by non-disclosure agreements, thereby affecting the reputations and careers of uh, the people working in, the, in those particular uh, work situations. We don't believe that sociology should only exist within universities. It's too important to society for that. Sociologists have got key knowledge and skills to address the daily issues and practical everyday problems that emerge in all sorts of walks of life in industry, business, government, public sector, communities, families, workplaces, organizations, and throughout communities. And we really need sociologists in all walks of life, not just teaching or researching within universities. So our objective now in the, and in the ASG is to promote sociology as a viable career outside academic settings in the same way that psychologists or economists can work in a variety of non-academic settings using their subject knowledge and insights rather than finding work 
that merely uses some of the software also instills. So to support, support this aim, we came up with this definition of applied sociology. You can probably tell that it's written by a committee. It differentiates applied sociology both from academic sociology and from public sociology. Though the latter is also part of what we see as this problem orientation of applied sociology. I'm afraid that um, I can only see part of that definition on the screen because some of the, um, uh, the little thumbnail pictures are uh, covering over it, but um, uh, hopefully you can go to the website afterwards and have an, another look at it. So what's the situation with applied sociology in the UK? Well, about 7,000 sociologists graduate each year from UK universities. I have no idea how many there are in Australia. It must be um, two, 3,000 maybe. Anyway, in the UK, that means that there are around about 300,000 working age sociologists. Of these, about 5,000 are employed in universities and about 2,700 are members of the BSA. So there's a huge pool of talent beyond academia and sociologists have got key knowledge and skills to address the daily issues and practical everyday problems that emerge in all those sectors I mentioned a moment ago. Well, you probably know that in the US and some other countries, clinical sociologists have broken out of the academic bunker very successfully. And they use their specialist knowledge to address problems and situations at work and in the community. And they work across the range of business, public sector and third, and third sector organizations. But in the UK, sociology graduates have had no real opportunities to practice as sociologists unless they go into research or academia. They have to work in myriad occupations where they may never use their specialized knowledge of social processes. So the ASG has got two objectives. The first is to increase demand by creating careers in UK applied sociologists. And the second is to increase the supply of sociologists with the skills and knowledge to work in applied settings. Well, to address this in 2017, we initiated a project to develop a curriculum in applied sociology. The curriculum is a resource aimed at university sociology degree course leads and offers a framework and indicative learning outcomes appropriate for final year undergraduates. It could form the basis of a final year unit of study, or I don't know if you call them modules here or units, uh, or potentially even for an entire master's degree. Well, we launched this at the BSA conference in 2018. And since then, it's been offered free to all so UK sociology departments and to others around the world by arrangement. We've worked with a number of universities since then to help them develop applied sociology teaching. The curriculum is available to both read and download for free at this web address, appsoc.org.uk. These are the key points of the curriculum. First, it provides a framework and learning outcomes appropriate for undergraduate students. It doesn't try to develop class outlines, but it just suggests learning and assessment approaches. It offers a rationale, case studies, resources and links, and outlines four themes, which I'll talk about in the next slide. So these are the curriculum themes, and it's organized around first knowledge, the concepts, theories, and perspectives which are required to work as an applied sociologist. Second, the generic and subject specific skills which are required. Third, issues around employment, careers, and work ethics. And finally, some a practical component. So I'm, I'll go into each of these in detail. 
Firstly, knowledge. <clears throat> As this is a curriculum for uh, third year, uh, I beg your pardon, final year undergraduate students. If I, if I talk about third year in Australia, it'll be confusing, won't it? Final year undergraduate uh, students. It's assumed that they'll already have been exposed to the key theories, perspectives and concepts that comprise the sociological approach. We don't therefore expect that there would be substantive teaching of these aspects of sociological knowledge, although some revision of this material could form a way to introduce the unit's teaching activities. What this unit does do instead is give students opportunities to integrate their understanding of these elements of sociology within a sociological imagination that applies the subject matter to real life practical situations and problems. It'll encourage students to integrate and synthesize their existing knowledge of sociology, enabling them to gain insight into the practical relevance of sociological knowledge as, apply, as, apply, as, as opposed to its theoretical deployment in research and scholarship. So the intention is to provide entry level skills uh, for as apply, uh, entry level knowledge uh, which is appropriate for applied sociologists. But working as a sociologist in an applied setting will require practitioners to have a range of skills, some of which are transferable directly from the academic setting of undergraduate studies, while others will be more specific to working independently to seek to address, understand and resolve a wide range of situations and problems in work and community settings. Transferable generic and, un and employability skills include verbal and written communication, critical thinking, working collaboratively, project management, and so on. And then there are some soft skills as well, such as listening, summarizing, creativity, and emotion management. Professional and subject specific skills include applying sociological theories in practical settings, appraising evidence, and applying the range of research skills that enable applied sociologists to develop and refine a research question, collect and analyze data, and report it back to clients verbally or in writing. And then finally, there's some skills specific to applied sociology, including pitching a proposal to a client verbally or in writing, negotiation and arbitration, enterprise skills, finance and business management, use of social media to network and promote work and interacting with the mainstream media. And activist skills might also be relevant. Moving on, the employment careers and work ethics component of the curriculum complements and builds upon the skills required to undertake applied sociology, but also addresses specific issues around working as an applied sociologist. It considers how to situate a personal and professional identity as an applied sociologist within broader social contexts. The employment stream, beg your pardon, the employment thread within this, within, within this component considers different models of applied sociological work, roles and professional identities. The careers theme considers how to establish a, a workable career as an applied sociologist and the final theme examines codes of ethics and legal responsibilities when working as an applied sociologist. To assist learning in this applied sociology module, we consider it's important that any course which develops this curriculum uh, will be able to get, uh, provide students with some practical experience for, of applying sociological skills and knowledge. Indeed, this may be the means by which many of the learning outcomes already identified in the knowledge, skills and employment components are achieved. Practical activities can enable students to explore the application of theory and concepts. For example, demonstrating the way that social and cultural factors link individual experience to the public domain of events while grounding their activities in theory. 
This will give students an opportunity to try out skills developed early in their career, in their, in their degrees. Finally, a practical component will supply the means to reflect on the practice of applied sociological work to deepen their understanding of what it is to work as a sociological practitioner, and thus to help students to gain insight in what it means to do applied sociology. And the curriculum suggests various models for how to include a practical component in this training module. We offer suggestions in the curriculum document for learning activities to deliver the learning outcomes identified in the, uh, in the curriculum element sections, along with details of a related formative assessment and the learning outcomes which might be achieved by that. It also suggests models for assessing the course summatively, including placement reports, portfolios, literature reviews, and essays. Well, this is how we did it. I'm not going to read all that out. You can have a quick look at that, I think, is the best way to do this. It documents the various stages and timescales for the curriculum development, which, as you can see, took round about eight or nine months. Incidentally, I've already sent these slides to Catherine so she can disseminate these. I'm very happy for them to be disseminated in addition to the recording of this talk. So what did we do to actually disseminate it once we produced it? Well, after we launched at the BSA conference, one of the most complex tasks was actually getting hold of the names and email addresses of the course leads for undergraduate sociology programs across the UK. Um, this, I have to say, is, is an extremely problematic area which we hadn't really thought about when we started off on the curriculum because typically course leads survive in post for a couple of years and then move on. So any database that you develop is going to be out of date. And now six years on, I'm sure there were very, there were very few of those uh, course leads in 96 sociology departments who are still the ones who we had in our original database. Anyway, it was mostly then a matter of phoning up departmental administrators um, to actually try to make contact with these course leads. But in the end, we did, con we did make connections with all 96. These cold calls translated into about a dozen conversations with course leads interested in developing the materials for their students. Well, this slide also documents some of the other things we did to promote the curriculum. But I have to say that it's probably actually would be a full time job to do this effectively and on an ongoing basis. And we now rely upon the website to do most of our promotion for us. Speaking of which, we developed a freestanding website. Um, and it's uh, in addition to the address, which is at the bottom of the screen, which is actually the, the rather, um, uh, what's the word, the schematic uh, one provided by the BSA for us, which, which provides very little information. We actually set up an independent website uh, at the address that I gave you earlier on. And uh, this is the means whereby we not only disseminate um, and enable downloads of the curriculum, but also we do other things like the blog and the, the podcast, which I'll mention in a moment. So what's been the uptake? Well, we can't log people who just casually uh, log into the web, web address. I mean, we could do, but it'd be fairly pointless and uh, there would be thousands and thousands and thousands upon those. But we made it the case that if people want to download the curriculum materials as a PDF, then they have to register. And so we have a record of all the downloads with names and email addresses, which has been very useful. Um, and 
so far we've had we've got 119 people in the uh, database which doesn't sound like a huge number but uh, i think it's actually it's indicative of a significant uptake in terms of people who wanted it uh, sufficiently badly to actually download it in addition we know that a number of institutions have actually taken up the uh, the curriculum and i've been in contact with with uh, some of those including one uh, entire new masters in applied sociology which has been developed uh, and we can't take complete claim for that uh, uh, credit claim for credits for that but uh, certainly our curriculum was in uh, was helpful in their development So the curriculum is one aspect of our work to in, in, imply, in, to in, enhance the supply side of UK applied sociology with the intention of creating a case of sociology graduates who have capacities to work as applied sociologists. And we've put on events over the past few years to reach out to students and graduates with informal training and case studies of sociologists working as sociologists in non-academic settings. In the, in the tech and design industries in particular, in addition to promoting the supply side. However, we've also made some efforts to develop the demand side of the, of the equation, as there's a, there's a little point in developing an army of qualified applied sociologists without showing potential employers the benefit of having a sociologist in the office. Well, over the last year, I'll talk about a couple of initiatives. Um, in April 2020, uh, my colleague at the University of Sheffield, Katie Powell, and I ran a workshop which aimed to bring together public health and sociologists in the Yorkshire region of the UK to discuss how to enhance sociological input into public health. It was one of the first face-to-face -face events after the pandemic was so it was a, a joyous occasion just to be there uh, in person for that alone. We had academics, public health professionals and postgraduate students from various local universities attending. It was very productive in terms of identifying what needs to be done to bring sociology and public health into closer collaboration. We're now seeking to place an opinion piece in a public health journal with some concrete suggestions as a means to make connections into the wider public health networks across the UK and elsewhere. The second initiative is actually uh, one being run by a couple of my young colleagues at the University of Huddersfield, who are currently seconded for two years to a local uh, council, a, a government uh, organization, government authority. And I've been working with them uh, for, for on and off for the last, last few months, providing some support in terms of mentoring, though they have more formal line management in the university as well. They've, interestingly enough, been employed not as sociologists, but as information analysts, which may be as less threatening as a title for the, um, the public health uh, and other uh, council workers there. And they're working on a range of projects, uh, which include housing, um, uh, looking at um, uh, a number of different developments and they'll report back to the various different council developments in uh, departments in 2023. So these are all very small steps and uh, it's going to take a much bigger organisation, I think, to begin to make a real difference to that demand side. Um, a couple of things that we've done um, since then is to uh, develop a blog which is about uh, all aspects of applied sociology and careers and also since last year some interviews uh, which were done by uh, one of our members Sonny Gunnessy uh, who is a, a sociology teacher but he's been reaching out and doing interviews with a wide range of sociology graduates working in different fields and those podcasts are all on the website and really well worth looking at. So I'd like to just end really with a few general reflections on where we are in the UK. And I'm just about up to the 25 minute limit that, that Catherine set for me. So I'm going to actually just leave those up on the screen um, uh, for a moment and 
uh, perhaps you can take a look at those and they might actually form the basis for any comments or questions. Thank you, Nick. So as you, yeah, I'll just say as you as you as you read those, then thank you very much for listening. And um, I'd be delighted to uh, provide any further uh, insights as I can. Thank you very much. Thanks very much, Nick.